role of promotion is to communicate with individuals, groups, and organizations to facilitate an exchange directly or indirectly, facilitate the market exchange for pr product from consumers or from buyers. It encourages marketing exchanges by attempting to persuade individuals, groups, or organizations to accept goods, services, and ideas in support of their needs and when they accept them, of course, they exchange value in terms of the price. Advertising, personal selling, publicity, sales promotions, these are all connectively known as the promotion mix because strong promotion programs result from the careful selection and blending of all of these elements. The process of coordinating the promotion mix elements and synchronizing promotion as a unified effort is called the inner integrated marketing communication strategy. When planning, planning promotional activities, an integrated marketing communications approach results in a desired, very well thought out message for consumers in an effort to make those consumers participate in a value exchange. Advertising is the paid form of non-personal communications, communication that is tra transmitted through some sort of mass media, such as television commercials or, or magazine advertisements. An advertising campaign is designed as a series of advertisements and placing them into various media to, media to reach a particular target market. Oftentimes, different aspects of the product are promoted in different types of media to create an overall, an overall sense of the consumer that this is something that they need and it seems to be apparent because it's so ubiquitous. Several factors affect the, tr the advertising campaign. Some of these include the product features, the uses and benefits, and how these affect the uh, individual potential purchaser. Uh, these, are, these are part of the campaign, the marketing campaign, and the message of individual ads. Characteristics of the people in the target market, that is their gender, age, education, race, income, occupation, etc. Um, all of these attributions also influence the content and the form of advertising. The advertising campaign's objectives, whether they're to increase sales, to create brand awareness or whatever, affect the content and the form of the message as well. Finally, the choice of media affects the message. Print media includes magazines, newspapers, direct mail, and billboards, while electronic media includes television, radio, and internet marketing. All product features uh, and uses and benefits affect the content of the campaign message and the individual ads. Characteristics of the people in the target audience, gender, age, education, etc., also influence the content. For example, when Procter & Gamble promotes Crest toothpaste to children, the company emphasizes daily brushing, brushing and cavity control whereas it promotes tartar control and whiter teeth when marketing to adults. To communicate effectively, advertisers use words, symbols, and illustrations that are meaningful, familiar, and attract attractive to people in the target audience. That's why it's so important to understand the characteristics of the target audience, because you're trying to make them recognize and respond to the advertising campaign. In addition to advertising, Personal selling is direct two-way communication with buyers and or potential buyers. For many products, especially large expensive ones with specialized uses like cars, appliances, houses, etc., interaction between a salesperson and a customer is probably the most important promotional tool available. Personal selling is the most flexible of all the promotional methods because it gives the marketer the greatest opportunity to communicate specific information to individual persons that might trigger the pers this purchase for that individual. There are three distinct categories of salespersons. Order takers, for example, retail sales clerks or root, or, or root salespeople. Uh, creative salespersons, for example, uh, tele automobile, uh, furniture and insurance salespeople that support individual ones. And then there's the support salespeople, for example, customer educators and goodwill builders who usually do not take orders, but they're providing the marketing collateral information to the salespeople so that they can 
they can educate the consumers and then eventually uh, get that order closed. The personal selling process is a six step process. It's really quite important in the sales process not to try and short circuit such this process, but to go through the steps very, very systematically and move to the next phase at the right time. This is why salespeople are compensated at such a high level because they become quite professional and, and perceptive in terms of moving through this selling process. First, you have prospecting, which is identifying potential buyers, separating the tire kickers, as they say, from those who actually might buy. There's approaching them, that is referral or cold calls, approaching people that you have identified as potential buyers. Presenting or demonstrating the product, that's a sense of awareness, letting people know the product is there, what it can do, how it can work. Uh, it's uh, generally something that's you try to be non-intimidating. You don't want to move to close too fast. What you're trying to do is educate them that, gee, this is the one thing I've been looking for. So you have to understand what people are looking for and then show how your product might fit into that model of what that purchase decision, that would drive a purchase decision down the line. Uh, inevitably, consumers have questions or whatever. So you want to handle the objections. That is, somebody says, yeah, but it's too expensive or yeah, but this or yeah, but that. Uh, so you one by one want to turn those objectives into selling points, kind of overcoming or countering the reasons they might have for not taking the purchase. And once that the objections are overcome, moving to sale, that is going to closing, asking for action, um, asking for someone to purchase it. Will you purchase this today? As you will. So this is a this is the part where the um, the order is essentially taken, and then you want to follow up with the consumer after purchase to make sure that there's that if there is any buyer's remorse, you could overcome those concerns and continue forward with the final close. So those are the the aspects of selling. Uh, it's really important or it's really useful to think back through this process and realize how important all these steps are and uh, internalize the fact that anytime you're trying to accomplish something in a relationship, these six steps are important elements to pass through and not forget to go for the close when the time is right. Don't just let it go to them deciding you have to actually ask for the close. Another element of the promotion process is free, the free publicity. Um, this is non-personal communications that transmitted through mass media but is not fit, paid for directly by the firm. A firm does not pay the media costs for publicity and is not identified as the originator of the message. Instead, the message is presented as a news story in a news story form. Many companies have public relations departments to try to gain, a favor, to gain favorable publicity and minimize negative publicity for the firm. So this is the part of promotion that relates to the, uh, the mood of the environment and trying to get news stories that, that put your name in front of people's um, in, in the front of people's minds so they can think about your products and services when the time comes for them to decide on making a purchase. So let's talk just a minute about how publicity and advertising are different. Advertising, uh, they're both carried by mass media, but they differ in important ways. Uh, advertising messages are paid for but they tend to be informative and persuasive or both. But publicity is mainly informative, but it is also perceived or should be perceived by the audience as impartial. So there's some real advantages in terms of how they receive the information. They don't listen to it with skepticism, but they listen to it as if it's probably impartial. Advertising is also designed to have a specific impact and provide specific information to persuade a person to act, whereby uh, publicity describes what the firm is doing, what products it's launching, all those kinds of things, um, and it provides some newsworthy information, but it seldom has a call for action. When advertising is used, the organization must pay for the media time, select the media that will best reach the target audience. The mass media willingly carries publicity because they believe it is a general public interest in contrast. So from them, they're just publishing it because of where, how they see to the target audience they think would be interested and you have less control over where that, where that information goes. 
advertising like it can also be repeated a number of times since you're paying for it but most publicity appears in the mass media just one time and it's not repeated unless like through social media it is resent and retweeted and all of those kinds of things which uh, your social media or your social marketing team might actually spend their day finding good publicity and then trying to push it out through social media um, as a way to increase the number of people that actually see it. A variation in traditional advertising is buzz marketing in which marketers attempt to create a trend uh, or some acceptance or visibility into the product by creating a buzz. Companies seek out trendsetters in the communities and they let them talk up a brand to their friends, families, coworkers, and others. The idea behind buzz marketing is that an accepted member of a particular social, social group will be more credible than any form of paid communications. The concept works best uh, as part of an integrated marketing communication program. So you have some publicity, you have some advertising, and you also have some of this buzz marketing work so that when uh, publicity is out there, the buzz marketing person reamplifies that within their community, and the advertisements, of course, uh, go for that um, asking for the close or that call to action of some sort. A related concept is viral marketing, which describes the concept of trying to get internet users to pass on ads and promotions to others, as we talked about earlier, which can happen a lot with, it's a good way to make best use of free publicity by pushing it out there, by trying to get some viral uh, connections and retweets and, the, and resends and likes and all of that uh, shares across the social media platform. Another important part of promotion is the idea of uh, sales promotions. These are direct inducements that offer some specific value or other incentive to buyers so that they will enter into a sales exchange or an exchange relationship now, sooner rather than later. Sales promotions are generally easier to measure and less expensive than advertising. The major tools of sales promotion are store displays, premiums, samples, demonstrations, coupons, contests, sweepstakes, refunds, or even trade shows. Coupon clipping is a particular one because it has become very common during it's very common during uh, economic downturns like recessions. While coupons can be a valuable tool in sales promotion, they cannot be relied upon to stand by themselves, but should be part of an overall promotion mix. Sales promotion stimulates customers purchasing and increases, increases the dealer's effectiveness in selling their products. It's used to enhance and supplement other forms of promotion. Sampling a product may also encourage consumers to buy. So the kinds of things that happen at the point of sale that try to go to a call to action and a closing of a sale, these are sales promotions. So the way to think about it. So there's a whole bunch of different, um, uh, different quivers, uh, different uh, arrows in the quiver of sales promotion or of uh, marketing promotion that uh, marketers need to learn how to use and deal with. And you could see that there's many, many aspects of uh, of of marketing uh, all the way from uh, figuring out what products to sell and when to sell them and how to sell them the um, the notion of how to price them the idea of how one uh, distributes or places them in front of customers how you get them to customers through marketing channels and lastly how one promotes the various products and services that are for sale in the last lecture in this particular module we'll go into marketing strategies and talk about this all in a little bit more detail